Okay, so one thing that uh, a metabotropic receptor could do, right? Also remember, this is called a G protein coupled receptor or a GPCR. Remember, it's coupled to a G protein on the inside uh, before the neurotransmitter binds. Once the neurotransmitter binds, there's a change in shape and a release of that G protein. So I want you to look at this image. The, this release G protein, one of the things that it could do, right, is work its way over on the intracellular side of the membrane. Now it's been released on that intracellular side, inside the cell, right? Because of the action of the neurotransmitter extracellularly out here in the cleft, in the synaptic cleft, it can be released and work its way over and it can bind to a channel. And the channel, this is a gated channel. So before the G protein is released from the metabotropic receptor or the GPCR, the G protein coupled receptor, before the neurotransmitter binds, or in some cases we're gonna see a drug binds, it can work its way over to this gated channel that is closed until the G protein binds to it. So this is what we call a G protein gated ion channel. So it can then swing open a channel that could, let's say, allow for sodium to come through. And remember, sodium will be driven in, you know, based upon the concentration gradient force and electrical force. And bringing that positive ion in, in this neuron that's presumably at rest, right, at minus 65, will depolarize it towards threshold. Um, you could also have a G protein gated channel, right, ion channel, that has a pore that allows for chloride to go through. Remember, chloride is in high concentration outside, you know, the neuron. Uh, that's where it comes in through diet. It's, the membrane's not very permeable to chloride. And at the resting potential of minus 65, right, that level of electrical, you know, force across the membrane, um, the concentration gradient force wins and chloride will work its way in. You know, should a G protein be released from the metabotropic receptor, come over here and open this G protein gated channel because it's been gated by the binding of the G protein and it's letting chloride now come in and hyperpolarize or inhibit the neuron. Just as another example, right? You could have a G protein gated ion channel that has a pore that's selective for potassium, right? And remember, just as review, right? You have a neurotransmitter released, binds to the metabotropic receptor in the extracellular space like out here in the cleft, right? There's a shift in shape and this metabotropic receptor, also known as a G protein coupled receptor, uncouples the G protein. It works its way over to now another channel that's gated uh, and closed at the resting potential. But because the G protein binds to it on the inside, it swings open. It's gated by the binding of that released G protein. And it has a, a, a hole or pore or channel that allows for potassium to go through. And potassium, remember, is in high concentration inside the cell because of the pump, right? Uh, and at the resting potential, you know, the concentration gradient force is stronger than the electrical force. So the positively charged potassium works its way out um, and then it hyperpolarizes. It makes it more negative inside, you know, versus the outside. It makes it less likely to fire an action potential, right? Because um, you're moving farther away from the depolarized threshold potential of minus 55, you know, where, where should you reach it, you get all the voltage gated sodium and potassium channels opening and you get the initiation potential of an action potential. So um, these G, G protein gated ion channels are important because um, even though let's say we're gonna see dopamine only acts at metabotropic receptors, at G protein coupled receptors, it's the only kind of target it's got. Um, it doesn't have ionotropic targets. It doesn't mean that um, it's not changing the charge difference across the membrane and either inhibiting or exciting the next cell. It's just taking a little longer, right? There's another step involved. It's binding to a metabotropic receptor. I got the how do I do this? Like this, let's say, and here's the G protein inside. It's, it's binding out here. Uh, it's releasing the G protein, but that G protein can move over and open a G protein gated ion channel that can alter the charge difference, that can you know either depolarize or hyperpolarize uh, and either excite or inhibit the cell.